Malolele. My name is Tui Emma Gillies. I am standing in front of my grandmother's tapa cloth, Emma Topini. I grew up with this in my bedroom. In 2014, my mother and I went back to do a project in Falevai, Fava'u, Tonga, uh, to create two large natu with the woman in the village. And this, this is an account of what we did. This is my mum, Suliti Fiumi Abaros, with my daughter, Aroha Heilala. We're heading towards mum's home village of Falevai, a place I've heard about all my life. This is Lofa Fononga, the boat driver. We've never met before, but apparently his grandfather organised my grandmother's marriage. There's a whole hidden history I'm heading towards. Falevai is an hour by boat from Niafu, the capital of the Vava'u Island Group in Tonga. Vava'u is one of the three island groups that make up the Kingdom of Tonga, which is directly south of Samoa, about two-thirds of the way from Hawaii to New Zealand. It's now 2014. The last time Mum was in Falevai was when her mother died in 1985. I've been to Tonga a few times, but never Vava'u. Mum and I are tapa artists who live in Auckland, the biggest city in New Zealand, and we're keen to reconnect with the source of our art, Falevai, the place and the people. This is my cousin Lata. She's come to help us with the baby. This place just blows my mind. Mum and I want to work on two natu or tapa cloths with a Falevai woman. We've bought the tapa cloth from the markets in Nukua Lofa, the capital of Tonga. But the women here haven't done tapa art for decades. They take us to an abandoned house. That's where the papa koka anga, on which the tapa is rubbed, has been abandoned too. So mum gets the men to take the papa koka anga back to the community hall for us. Tapa cloth is made from the soft inner bark of the paper mulberry tree. But there are no mulberry trees in Falevai anymore. There is mum's friend Letty though. She's the funniest woman in the village. And there's Vienna Manuela, she's mum's cousin, and is married to the Mata Apule of the village, the noble's right-hand man. Around 22 families live in Falivai, and lots of dogs, pigs and chickens. Eventually mum gets all the women together to begin the work. I've drawn designs based on my first impressions of Falivai. So to make the kupesi rubbings, I draw the designs and the women stitch coconut leaf spines to them. When the day's work is done, there's freshly caught fish cooked in coconut cream. The next morning, Mum and Lata take Aroha to church. I guess by now you can tell that this is the first time I've tried to video anything. Later we head to our family land at Whangakima. It's 15 minutes away by tractor through the bush. We're grabbing ourselves some Whangakima coconuts. Growing up, Mum told me stories about warriors putting human heads in the ground underneath coconut trees. Are these the baby coconut? Yeah, that's, that's really good. Because it's easy to take. Mm. Oh, wow, look! Look, it's beautiful. Mm. No one lives here nowadays. The old well is under these coconuts. The next day, the women sing a traditional work song as we start to prepare the white tapa cloth or fitaaki. As I've mentioned, it's made from the soft inner bark of the paper mulberry tree and pieces of it are beaten flat and glued together. The men collect tapioca for glue and coca for red dye from the bush. The women rub the tapioca on the edges of the tapa to glue the pieces together. And so we start the work on the two big natu. Akusita is preparing these offcuts to be used to rub the dye onto the tapa cloth. 
All the women mark the occasion by wearing flowers in their hair and kahoa necklaces. And as always, Letty is the life of the party. <laughs> the kupesi rubbings are placed under the natu or tapa cloth. <laughs> Seini Loao keeps the tapioca coming. She passes it to Bilimi Lose and a human chain feeds the woman working on the natu. <laughs> That woman in red is mum's good friend, Fine Lepolo. Next to her on the left is Lossi, the wife of one of the church ministers. By this stage, mum's feeling like a celebrity, stalked by the paparazzi, and waves my camera away. Mum gets the woman to lay more natu over the papa kokaanga. Next, the women start applying the red coca dye. The men made the dye by scraping shavings off the outside layer of bark on the coca tree. A little water was added and then it was put in a cloth and the dye was wrung out by hand. Rubbing the red coca dye over the natu brings out the kupesi designs. The natu is starting to come to life now. You can see the flowers, the villages and the ever-present pigs, or as I like to call them, puakas. After a week, the kupesi designs on the natu are complete. A whaka osi or closing ceremony is held in the community hall. Some have never been paid for work in their lives, so they are very proud. Towards the end of the trip, we return to our family land with a few of the locals for a swim at Whangakema Beach. Here's Letty pretending to be a whale. Mum saw whales so often growing up she can't understand why people would pay to watch them. The water in Fava'u is so clear and blue. It's like glass. The men of Falivai kill a couple of their pigs for us for a special send-off feast. I got a bit of a shock watching the guys manhandle the pigs on the fire. <laughs> But man, it tasted so good. The crackling's probably the best I've had in my life. This shellfish delicacy is known as a lolly. Oh, I couldn't bring myself to try it though. Maybe next time. Here's Taitusi, the noble's right hand man. It doesn't matter how big the feast is though, there's always room for a few Tongan donuts. And before we left, Vienna Manuela performed a dance for us. It was no special or traditional ceremony. She just knew I had the camera rolling and couldn't resist putting on a show. <laughs> no music needed. <laughs> and then we were off. This is the cave we motored past on the way into Falevai. This time, Lufa takes us right inside. After we left, the locals planted paper mulberry trees again to make tapa with. As we motored away from Falevai, I couldn't help feeling that we went there for an art project. But we got so much more than we ever could have expected. We truly did reconnect with the source of our art. Mum recharged the batteries of her tongue in this, and I found a whole new branch of my family. I'm video recorder! <laughs> and finally experienced a place that has always fired my imagination. From now on, our art will always be inspired by this trip. Back in New Zealand, we spent a year painting the two big natu. We broke with tradition and painted it in full colour, mixing traditional dyes with modern ones. We decided we're Tongans, but we're Kiwi Tongans. We want to reflect both sides of our culture. <laughs> 